we got on DXC's new PCIe H1 riser cable in, and this is supposed to replace the one that was recalled by governments around the world for being a fire hazard previously. So the new cable, in addition to doing our more practical means of testing, namely trying to catch it on fire, we're also going to be doing some more scientific means of testing, and we'll be working with a company called Creative Electron in California that manufactures and sells x-ray equipment to perform x-ray analysis of the old cable and the new cable to look layer by layer and see what it looks like inside. And if, other than the practical testing, it looks like there's any reason to be concerned regarding the placement of the PCIe or the, the 12 volt or the ground planes as it relates to the PCIe riser screw hole. That was a concern previously. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly. Thermal Grizzly's Hydronaut and Cryonaut thermal paste are high-performing thermal interfaces for use on CPUs and GPUs. You can bring an old card back to peak performance by repasting it and doing preventative maintenance, and Thermal Grizzly's Hydronaut is ideal for water cooling and air cooling for new and old cards alike. Cryonaut paste is one of the top performing pastes for extreme overclocking with CPUs and GPUs, and has been used in several world record scoring machines. Learn more at the link in the description below. Now at this point, if this new PCIe riser cable is fixed, as we'll find out today, what we really want to see is just good support from NZXT. If they've fixed the problem, then we want to give them credit for that. We want to help everyone move on from this issue so that NZXT can address the issue, learn from it, improve, and then move on and keep making things, hopefully, with the new lessons learned. So the only point left will be how customer service handles the RMAs, the warranties, uh, and the refunds relating to the NZXT H1 case and the recalls that are happening everywhere. And that's going to be a logistical nightmare, so it may take them a little bit to figure out. But either way, our goal from the beginning was to focus on the safety issue, which was the fact that the original PCIe riser could catch fire and uh, try to get that out of the market. And that's been recalled, so now it's just a matter of if NZXT is going to replace them all with one that's fixed. And that's what we're looking at. I'll give it a, a cursory look and we'll just kind of identify them visually, the changes. Then I'll pass to uh, Patrick and uh, Patrick Latham, Patrick Stone to analyze the PCIe riser and we'll look at the standard stuff. So digital multimeter probing to see if nothing's shorted because that was a problem with our first one we tested where 12 volts was shorted to ground immediately. And then we'll test uh, if socketing and unsocketing the PCIe riser has any effect on the holes of the PCIe, so these, these through holes previously, which were unplated, and we have a microscope shot of this too that we can show, where there's a 12 volt plane inside of here that with screw cycles would become exposed. And so uh, that is what we're, we're making sure that doesn't happen again, that's resolved on the new one. As for what NZXC is doing, so the company says that throughout March, late March, maybe early April, they're planning to send the riser out, and if you are waiting in the meantime, they will send you nylon screws. My understanding is that there's still a lot of people who have been waiting multiple months to even just get the nylon screws. So I don't know, how, not really sure how much faith to put in NZXC shipping out the PCIe risers in a timely fashion, but until you have one or both of those solutions, and we would recommend both, as in new PCIe riser, uh, discontinue use of your NZXT H1 unless you've replaced the PCIe riser with maybe a third party or something, but don't use the original one. That's our recommendation on this, and uh, CPSCs as well, although we'd recommend further not to use just the nylon screws in the original. Anyway, let's look at this. So this is already clearly different. They do have the plated through holes now. So you can see the new one only has the holes that are necessary to mount it to the NZXT H1. Whereas the original was clearly some stock pulled off of a shelf or out of a, a supplier line from some other project and then had the holes drilled in maybe posthumously. So this is, that's the NZXT mounting hole and the other ones, the like cheese grater of holes around it were not useful for this particular case and hence obviously uh, a supply from somewhere else. So this looks like it's maybe custom made, which is a good start because those holes in the NZXT H1 over here are somewhat uniquely spaced. So custom making it means we're not going to end up with a cheese grater again with a bunch of 12 volt uh, concerns near those holes if a screw ever goes through them. So we've got plated through holes. Let's see if they're larger this time. These screws come with it as well. I guess they're assuming maybe in case you threw away the old ones or whatever, but these come with it. So first thing, that's, that's a good start. 
the fact that I can do this is actually really good because <laughs> the original, it would chew into the board. So first off, uh, right away, we're, we're improved there. Yeah, and just to prove the point, you can see, I mean, that's the same problem it's always been. Before we go any further with the practical and the physical testing of the cable, let's take a look at the x-ray analysis to see the internal structure of it. Creative Electron used its x-ray cabinet called the TrueView Fusion to look closer at the riser cables, and here's a shot of them side by side. This won't tell us much yet, so we need to zoom in to see more, but it gives us a baseline for discussion. The cable on the right is clearly the old cable, made obvious by two things. First, it looks like a cheese grater. And second, the PCB material is less dense, showing up as a lighter shade of gray in the imaging. And here's a high contrast image of the old cable, zoomed into the lower of the two mounting holes from the NZXT H1 chassis mounting bracket. Creative Electron immediately asked us if those other holes are used for anything, and we explained that we now know, thanks to Health Canada's recall notice, that this cable came out of a third-party factory, and that third-party factory was likely selling a prefabricated part that had a new hole punched through it for the NZXT H1. And this is where it gets interesting. Take a look at the hole on the left. This is an unburned cable that we pulled out of an NZXT H1 case, including removal of its original stock installed screw that threaded the PCB. And so that hole is the one that was used for the H1. All the others are unneeded, and whomever else the factory sells the cable to might use them, but NZXT doesn't. If you look at the outer border of the PCB, you'll see a mid-tone gray adjacent to a dark gray. The dark gray is an area where copper power planes are penetrated by the photons, representing a higher mass section of the board. There are lighter tone circles around some of the unused holes that the H1 doesn't use but that are included in the PCB. And these circles show areas where there's probably a keep-out zone, or at least a lack of copper, for the area surrounding them. The hole that was originally threaded by NZXT in its own factory is widened since the screw was too big, and that is the screw that they included stock, and so that keep-out zone either never existed or it was too small and it was chewed up during installation to the point that it no longer exists. This shot is also useful. This is the right side of the old cable, and you'll see some holes that we can't even use up by the PCIe slot, but then one that NZXT used below the PCIe clip. The one below it was barely used and doesn't have the marred surface of the more heavily trafficked lower hole that we showed earlier. We only ever took a screw out of this hole, but we didn't screw cycle it like we did for the installation of the PCB with the lower screw hole on the NZXT H1 mounting bracket. That point is important. You can see that this zone of fiberglass or whatever is thinner than those above it, either because the factory punched a hole that's too big, because the keep out is too small, or because NZXT used a screw for the original installation that's too large, but we only ever took it out. It didn't get put back in again. It could also be any mixture of those three things. On the new one, in the same spot, you can see a black outline from the plating to protect the inner walls of the screw hole. Separately, since the screw no longer contacts the walls, there's no stock way to thread into the PCB unless using the original screw, and that's a good change. This isometric shot is just sort of neat. It doesn't really tell us a whole lot, but it's cool to look at. This is the new connector. You can see the plated through hole and some tubes running the height of the board. And on a side note, if you're in electrical engineering and know why those, you can see it on the top of the PCB, and the bottom where it almost looks like a small solder ball. But if you know specifically why those tubes run the length of the board, we'd love to hear from you in the comments section so that we can learn more about the engineering side of things. We also have some shots of the side. In this shot, the copper planes are visible as black layers going through the board. We can't see directly adjacent to the through hole from this angle since it's a side view and so any copper towards the borders will show first. But you can see the tubes running vertically through the board and surrounding the darker chamber representing the through hole. The chamber here is darker because of that plating. In the older one, you can still see copper planes running through the board, but you can also see something interesting. The board is overall thinner, and it consists of fewer layers and less material. This is more of a statement about the overall quality of the PCB construction than it is on the power plane issues and the fire issues we were talking about earlier. It's just that it's a thinner, more wafer-like material, and that becomes pretty obvious when you look at the sides of the physical PCIe risers. Okay, I'm the chosen Patrick, and I'm going to do some continuity tests on here, just like we did last time with the, uh, the other two cables just to make sure that things have been fixed here. So there have been some other changes. The, the 
PCB is a different color. That might be a, just a coating or um, or a different material, but it's from the same brand. Uh, the thing that matters though is the shorting to ground issue. So we'll test that right now. QC marker no longer has a year on it, but we can assume that it was <laughs> tested in 2021 and it's marked uh, two for February. So this is of recent production. So as Steve, I think has already pointed out, there's there are much fewer holes in this PCB here. It seems purpose built rather than some PCB that's been reused for a bunch of different purposes and has a bunch of different holes in it. So we have just two plated through holes here and the ground pins should ideally have continuity um, to these through holes and the 12 volt pins should never have continuity to the through holes. So um, we're just doing a continuity test here. We could do resistance as well, but you hear the beep, that's bad. That's 12 volt pin number one. 12 volt pin number two, number three, and over on the other side, uh, it's on pin two, that should also be 12 volt, and pin three, and that's 12 volt, and just to confirm that's working. So then if we go to the ground pins, one, two, three, four, that should be ground, and that has continuity. And it should be ground on the other side as well. It has continuity. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This should be ground. And it is. And then just out of interest next to that is three volt. And that's not shorting. And that three volt isn't shorting. And these two three volt pins aren't shorting. So none of the power pins are shorting to the ground plane and uh, all of the ground pins are properly connected. So just from this test, it um, seems to be working well. So we fully built the system. This is uh, the same way it was set up last time. It's a different GPU, but it works the same way. Um, everything's built except for the 24 pin cable plugged in right here. Um, so we can just do some of the same tests we did last time. Um, I can connect to the ground pin. Uh, this is plugged into the power supply and confirm that this scratch on the motherboard tray is uh, connected to ground. And I can Confirm that the motherboard itself is connected to ground. Um, if I go over to the power supply here, I can probe some of the ground pins. Like, let me find one. Here's a ground pin. So that's connected to ground. I mean, that um, this is connected. This is coming out of the power supply, so that makes sense. Um, and then the 12 volt here is, um, this should, uh, beep and then the resistance will rise. Um, and yeah, so no more continuity. So, so that's connected to ground and then the other screw on the riser cable. So that's connected to ground. So the 12 volt pins, again, since the system's all hooked up, these um, these should beep and then uh, resistance should rise. Yep, that looks good. That's expected behavior when it's all hooked up. And then on the one, two, three, four, fourth pin here. So that's a ground pin and then that's connected. So now we can put the GPU back in. So all I'm gonna do now is just plug it in and make sure that it doesn't blow up, which we're not expecting it to. So power supply, 
switched on, and if I hit the power button, we don't have any fires starting. So this would be bursting into flames right about now if we uh, continue to have the same issue. So it's hard to prove a negative, and uh, we haven't tried to damage this in any way, but it seems like it's working as intended. So that's going to be it for the NDXT H1 cable. Now, like we were saying earlier in this video, it's tough to prove that something won't catch fire from anything at all ever. What we can say is we were unable to create a fire using the same methods that we used for the original cable, and then we took it a step further, worked with Creative Electron, and did some x-ray analysis of it, and this thing looks like the new cable, that is. Looks like it's improved to the point where we're no longer worried about it, but it's tough to prove a negative, as Patrick said earlier in this video. So where we'll leave this is it appears that NZXT has resolved the issue that we were concerned about, and NZXT is working on shipping those risers with the uh, four replacement parts if you already have the case. They still have an offer for a refund. If you have the case and you're like, you know what, I'm done, I don't want to wait for support, then go through the refund channels and get it resolved that way and destroy the existing cable if you have it. And NZXC is also sending out the nylon screws uh, in the meantime as sort of a, a stopgap solution. So the only way NDXE can really screw this up at this point is customer service. If they deny refunds that they've already offered, if they're slow, like irresponsibly slow, to get cables out to customers, if they uh, don't send cables out to certain regions for, say, three months, those are all big problems. That falls into customer support at that point and is no longer a product concern. NDXE doesn't have the best track record for customer support from our testing. Hopefully, however, they're treating this with the severity and urgency that it deserves. And uh, at this point, it looks like the cable's fixed. So hopefully everyone can just sort of uh, get, get their existing cables destroyed if you have one, replace it if you want to keep using the case. And it looks like this one is fine to put in there from what we can tell. If you love your H1 and you want to keep using it, that's totally fine. Just get rid of the old cable and get the new one in there. You should be good. So uh, of course, this was a sample size of one. So if you see something different than what we saw, please let us know. You can email us. Uh, or just post a comment in the comment section below, tweet at us, whatever. We'll probably see it. Uh, keep us posted as you get yours in so that we can make sure we're all on the same page and it's not just a special one-off sample. But it looks like it's done. Storyline's hopefully closed now. And that should be it. Hopefully, NZXT can move forward from this and improve its products in the future to not catch on fire, unless they're meant to. But that'd be a different product category. Thank you for watching. As always, subscribe for more. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net or patreon.com slash gamersnexus. It helps out directly. And uh, let us know what you thought about the x-ray stuff in the comments. That's pretty fun, new, and interesting for us. We'll see you all next time.